This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Today, the UN holds multiple votes on a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza, Russia detains a US journalist, and several US Republicans claim that they've been subjected to harassment. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 19th of October 2023. This week has seen a huge amount of action on the international stage to try and achieve a UN resolution condemning violence against civilians in the ongoing Israel-Gaza conflict. This started on Monday night, when Russia drafted a resolution calling for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. However, many members of the Security Council claim that this resolution lacked any specific condemnation of Hamas, the group that started the most recent violence in the region. In total, Russia only got the backing of five countries on this resolution, from China, Gabon, Mozambique, Russia and the United Arab Emirates. Four voted against this resolution, France, Japan, the UK and the US, while the remaining six countries abstained, Albania, Brazil, Ecuador, Ghana, Malta and Switzerland. On Wednesday, there was another attempt to pass a similar resolution. This time, the resolution was brought forward by Brazil and called for humanitarian pauses so that life-saving aid could be delivered to millions in Gaza. The resolution was rejected by only one country, the United States. Both Russia and the UK abstained on the vote. The other 12 members of the council blocked it. Explaining their decision to reject the amendment, the US ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said that the resolution did not mention Israel's right to self-defense. She added that previous resolutions on terror attacks specifically mentioned this right, and that Wednesday's resolution should have done the same. While the UK did abstain, they didn't vote against, the UK's ambassador, Barbara Woodward, used a similar justification as the US, saying that the motion needed to be clearer on Israel's right to self-defence. Woodward went on to claim, though, that Israel should take all feasible precautions to avoid harming Palestinian civilians. For their part, the Brazilian ambassador decried the failure of the council to back the resolution, saying council paralysis in the face of a humanitarian catastrophe is not in the interests of the international community. UN Security Council resolutions are considered binding, but the ability to enforce these resolutions is sometimes debated. We'll keep you updated on whether the council is able to reach an agreement. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Moving to Russia, where it's been reported today that a radio-free Europe journalist and US citizen has been detained. Alsu Komashiva was detained for failing to register as a foreign agent, at least according to her employer and a journalist watchdog group. A representative from her employer said that Kermashiva is a highly respected colleague, devoted wife and dedicated mother to two children, and that she needs to be released so that she can return to her family immediately. Kermashiva doesn't live in Russia. She normally works in Prague and only entered Russia on the 20th of May for a family emergency. She was arrested on the 2nd of June before her return flight. In her capacity as a journalist, she's written about ethnic minorities in Tatarstan, even as Russian authorities have increased pressure on Tartans in recent years. The Committee to Protect Journalists said in a statement that journalism is not a crime, and Kermashiva's detention is yet more proof that Russia is determined to stifle independent reporting. The CPJ went on to say that Alsu was detained simply because she is an employee of Radio Liberty. In fact, now any independent journalist in Russia risks the same thing. Moving to the US now, where Republican lawmakers are still debating and negotiating over who will take the role of House Speaker. However, in a further development today, some representatives have claimed that they have been subjected to intimidation tactics from those representing speakership candidate Jim Jordan. Marianne Miller Meeks, a Republican lawmaker from Iowa, claims that she received credible death threats and a barrage of threatening calls after she switched her vote from Jim Jordan to one of his competitors. Speaking about this, Miller Meeks said, One thing I cannot stomach or support is a bully. Another Republican lawmaker, Don Bacon, from Nebraska, claimed that his wife was being harassed by a supporter of Jim Jordan. 
He reported that his wife had received an anonymous message claiming that your husband will not hold any political office ever again. What a disappointment and failure he is. For his part, Jim Jordan denied any involvement in these incidents. He tweeted that no American should accost another because of their beliefs, and that we condemn all threats against our colleagues, and it's imperative that we come together. The battle to appoint a speaker continues, and we'll keep you updated on this story. Amazon has announced today that they aim to introduce drone deliveries in the UK next year, which is more than a decade after Jeff Bezos first promised that packages would be delivered by air. The company has said that packages that weigh less than £5 could be delivered by its Prime Air service within an hour. They plan to start offering this service in a single location, but plans to expand out after this. Amazon already offers this service in two cities in California and Texas. It also plans to roll the service out in Italy soon too. Speaking about these plans, Aviation Minister Baroness Veer said that the Amazon pilots would build our understanding of how best to use the new technology safely and securely. Bezos first announced the scheme back in 2013, but only began work on the technology in 2016. At this point, the scheme was only open to a handful of users. Amazon was actually beaten to the drone delivery system in the UK by the Royal Mail, who've been using this technology to deliver packages to the Orkney Islands over this summer. Irrespective, it seems that they're hoping that they'll be the next company to offer this service in the UK. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss India's plans to send people to the moon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that he wants to see his country's space programme ramp up and aims to send people to the moon by 2040. Modi also announced that he wants his country to develop their own space station in the middle of the next decade. Clearly, the Indian Prime Minister feels emboldened by the success of the Chandrayaan-3 moon landing that took place earlier this year. So, while we normally end the daily briefing with an uplifting story, not all of the news we cover is actually that uplifting. Actually, quite a lot of it's quite scary. Fortunately, when it comes to your digital safety, NordVPN has your back. It's an unfortunate reality that online scams and phishing attacks are on the rise, with us constantly bombarded with emails from our banks, social media accounts, and annoying newsletters we forgot we even signed up to. It's easy to click the wrong thing. One weak link can compromise security and bring things crashing down. With the protection of NordVPN though, you can use their threat protection features to identify potential suspicious links. Even if you did reach a suspicious website, NordVPN's data encryption tools would protect against a number of other attacks like malicious man-in-the-middle breaches. Even if things do go wrong, NordVPN's dark web monitoring is always scanning for your details and passwords and can actively notify you before you even notice. Plus, if you sign up to a two-year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you'll also get four extra months totally free. We've been told that sometimes when people hear us talk about NordVPN, they open up a new tab and start searching, but they don't use our link. I'm certainly glad that they do use the service, but you only get the discount and you support the channel through that link. So if you're trying to improve our journalism by signing up for Nord, use our link when you do, and you'll get their great service at a discount.